Hey folks, uh, my name is Alejandro or Alejandro, whatever you can pronounce, it's good. Um, I'm one of the co-facilitators of the Dare Arts team out west. Um, it's a beautiful and, and very sunny day um, here in the unceded um, and traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. Uh, these territories are also mistakenly known as Vancouver, British Columbia. Now, today we are going to learn how to make a piñata out of everyday household items. Now, I think most of you will probably have seen a piñata in your life, you've maybe even taken a swing at it at some point. Um, for those of you that, that haven't, that's cool. Um, it basically looks like a large but breakable levitating ball full of sweets and chocolate. It's, it's fantastic. Um, and it's actually been a huge part of my life. Um, they've been at my birthdays, they've been at my friends' birthdays, they've been at community uh, celebrations, um, and they've made me super happy. Um, and looking back on it as I'm a little bit older, I think they can teach us a lot, um, which is why um, I'm sharing this, this video with you. So with that said, let's get to our five there are words. Um, the first one is community. So piñatas bring people together. Um, to make them, you'll see it's a lot of work. To break them, you'll see that is a lot of work too. Um, and to share the wealth, because it's a lot of chocolate, it's a lot of sweets. Um, I end up thinking now that like piñatas are just an excuse to get people together. So our second word is solidarity. Piñatas do take a lot of work. A lot of hard work, but that work is never for personal gain. You never make a piñata for yourself. You make it for somebody else, for someone that you love, for people that you love. And that, I think, is a key point that we need to remember as leaders, but also as aspiring piñata makers. Um, the third one is imagination. So you can make a piñata into anything you want. The one that I'm going to show you how to make today is going to look like a pig. And it's a pig because it's my roommate's birthday and he hates pigs. So I think he'll get a crack out of trying to swing at, at our piñata that we'll make. Um, the fourth uh, uh, word is perseverance. Perseverance. You'll see that it's gonna get sticky. It's gonna get messy. Um, but that's cool. That's what we want. We want to use our hands a bit today. Um, and I think also that the result the piñata at the end of the day will be worth uh, the stickiness and the messiness. Um, and our last uh, there are word for today is celebration. At the end of the day, we want piñatas because there's chocolates and sweets inside. Uh, that's what we're about and that's what we get so excited about them. So with that, let's get to our ingredients real quick so we can get make our piñata. Now the first thing we're going to need is a balloon. Now this is going to be the skeleton to your piñata. Everything we're going to do is going to be on this. Obviously, we'll blow it up. You don't need a big balloon. You can just get a small one. You can make it as large as you want or as little as you want. It doesn't really matter. Now, the next thing we're going to need is the paper, the paper or the paper mache because we're going to make it out of paper. Now, I have like junk mail and some old crossword books that I found. But if you have old books you want to get rid of or you have a newspaper, even better. Hot tip. Um, use those, they'll be fantastic. Now, this is going to be the skin, but to stick the skin onto the skeleton, which is the balloon, we're going to need our paper mache base. And that, we're just going to make it out of um, some flour. This is about 250 grams. I didn't measure it, but it's kind of this cup. So if you fill a cup like this, like your teacup, uh, you'll have this. That's perfect. And you're going to need hot water. So if you're doing one cup of flour, you're going to need about four cups of hot water um, to make your paper mache base for the entire piñata. Now, we're also going to need some string, some twine. If you have old cables that you just want to get rid of, you don't know what to use them for, um, this would be great. We're going to use this to hang our piñata so we can hold it while whoever we want is trying to crack it at the end of the day. Um, I'm also going to paint it. Um, it's going to be a pig. So I've got some pink paint. I've got some white to make it pop. And I've got some black to do the snout or, or the ears. 
Um, if you don't have paint, that's cool. You can get cardboard and you can uh, paint it with markers or you can get streamers. You can decorate it in whatever way you want. Um, I just happen to have paint on me at this moment. So, oh, of course, sorry, I forgot the most important thing, the reason why we make the piñata. You're gonna need sweets um, or some fruit. That also works, just make sure it doesn't pop when it hits. So I just got some chocolate eggs, Easter time, and I've got some paper, kind of paper that I found that I think will be kind of cute when we pop the um, piñata. So let's get going. Our first step is making the paper mache base. So again, we're gonna need 250 grams of flour. Again, if you don't have a measuring, about a teacup, that should be fine. So, and we're gonna need our boiling water, hot water, it's cool, um, about three, four cups of that. So let's get going. It's super easy. We're gonna chuck all our flour in. There it is. And we're gonna start putting our hot water in here, but not all at the same go. We're gonna do it slowly so we get all the clumps out. So you can see it's very warm. So hot tip, don't use your hand. That's gonna get quite hot. Uh, make sure to use a fork or a spoon. And yeah, let's get going. Alright, so now that we have our paper mache base ready, um, let's get to our second step, which is making the skeleton. Never been an easier thing. Uh, we're just going to blow it to the size that we want. So yeah, let's do it. Alright, I like that. Should I tie it? at our skeleton of our piñata. Alright folks, this is the time. The time has come to make our piñata. I've got my balloon here. Um, uh, as you see, it's a little circle. We'll talk about that in a second, but why I did that. Got a little pot so I can put my balloon on top. That way it's easier to reach. I've got my cool down paper mache base. Um, I've got my paper I've cut up. Um, up here, and of course, I've got my lucky cactus is giving us good vibes and good energy throughout this entire project. Uh, so let's go. So, little circle, why is that there? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start lathering this piece of paper with the paper mache and start sticking it. Now, if I stick it here, and I cover this entire balloon with it, I'm not gonna be able to put anything in the pinata. This hole is, this circle is there so I can pop it at the end and start putting sweets in it and then we can have our delicious piñata. So let's start doing this. This is when it gets messy. I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna start lathering it up a bit. Folks, one side is good. And once I've got that, I'll start putting it here. And then once I've got it, I'm gonna put whatever's left outside and we are just going to start covering our piñata up with all these little pieces of paper. So let's get to it! So um, here it is. Um, after the third layer has finally dried, I actually left it overnight just to make sure it was completely dry. Um, we're ready to move on to the next stage. So we have persevered. Uh, our third dear artwork um, that we had back in the beginning, uh, we have had some bumps. 
literally, if you see your pinata, you should be having some little bumps. That's fantastic. Um, it should now be sturdy. It should be rigid. Um, it's not soft. I'm not going to say I'm going to push it with all my might, but it should be good enough to hold the sweets. We are almost there. All we need now is just the final detail before we paint it. Now, for this detail, we're going to have to engage our third Dare Art word, which is imagination. Remember, this piñata is not for us. It is for somebody else or some other people. So we need to think about what is it that they would like their piñata to look like. So I want you to think about the person who you're going to gift this piñata to. Um, think about what they like. Think about what they don't like. What maybe you have in common with them, what you don't have in common with them. And I think that will help you to make to have an idea about what your piñata should look like. And for me, as I told you before, it's for my roommate. He hates pigs, so I made a pig. So um, with some Sharpie, I made sure to make a snout, to have two eyes and some pig earrings. So now I'm going to show you how to actually make those details. Okay, so the detail is going to be made out of exactly the same paper that you have. So I need to make a eye. I've already made one, just to show you. But basically, I'm going to just crunch up the paper a bit. Um, and try to make it look as close to an eye <laughs> as I can possibly do. Um, for me, that's like just folding on the sides um, and making it look somewhat like a geometric shape, you know, like an, an octagon or something. And after that, once it kind of looks like an eye, I think that's pretty good compared to my other one. Um, if you have masking tape, that's perfect. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. You can tape it. I like to tape it, just because it, like, it keeps it somewhat together. Um, but you don't need to. Um, you'll see after how we're gonna stick it onto the pinata. So this is just for my own sake. Um, and just to keep everything kind of together. So I've got my eye there, second one, super easy. Um, then I'm gonna make one of the ears, right? That's super easy. That's a good ear. Yeah, it's big enough for my pig. Again, I'm gonna tape it. You don't need to. And for my snout, I am thinking it needs to be a little bit sturdier because um, I just can't fold this into a snout. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. Uh, it's not be really hard enough. So what I have is I have the title to the crossword, which is a little bit harder paper. I just cut a piece and I'm just gonna literally make it to a circle and or an oval I guess I yeah my math isn't great for those of you that have good geometrics you can tell me what this shape is um there we go and yeah that is it okay, so um I'm ready to put on the detail as you see I already taped on my snout but these paper ones I'm gonna have to actually paper bash shade them on so I've made, again, my little wheat paste. Um, it's that rest for a bit. So what we're going to do first is I'm just going to lather this place where I'm going to stick on the, the detail. In my case, it's the eye. Just putting it there. Then I'm going to lather the detail a bit just so it's a little bit stickier. I took the tape out uh, and then you'll see it, start, it will start holding its shape. So let's fold it a bit. And I am just going to stick it on. And now it's obviously not going to stick on by itself, so I need to put another sheet, and this is where the tricky part comes in. You need, you need a few hands here, but you lather everything perfectly, get the corners always. That's the most, as you've seen, it's the trickiest part. Make sure to pick a smaller piece of sheet for this, but and then I am just going to place it on.
we made it. <laughs> it's been a long process, two whole days for me, but we finally have finished pinata, dried and ready to go meet its maker. <laughs> but before we do that, I just want to take a time to reflect on everything that we did, everything we practiced, everything we learned. So obviously we learned how to make a pinata. We began with paper, with flour, with water, with a balloon, and just with our ideas and our drive, we transformed it into something very cool. And I think that we should all be very proud of that. And especially if this is your first time making a piñata, congrats. Like, I think we really did something that we will remember for, for some time for now. But the second thing we want to talk about is something that we practiced. Because we did something super important throughout this process that's very critical for us as leaders um, and that is our ability to work hard so that others can be happy, can be comfortable, and can lead themselves. Because this project was never about us. Remember, there are words, it was community and it was solidarity. This project was always about those people who we care about and who we want in our company. And that is precisely the power of the piñata. <laughs> the ability for it to make us think about those who we care about and to make us think about how we're all need to work to make sure that we're all comfortable with one another. So in these times with everything that's going on, I think that practice of collective care is precisely what we need to continue to do. So thank you for joining me through that process. But yes, I hear you. Enough of that sweet talk, let's get to the actual sweets. So, if everything was done correctly, I should be able to pop this balloon <laughs> with some, it doesn't want to be popped, there it is, woohoo! And it's perfect, it's been glued on, then I should simply 